for sale. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is written for those of us who have been born again. In other words, we're, not, we're going to fall short, <clears throat> even in our best effort. You know, we're going to fall at times. We're going to have times where we fall and stumble into sin, where we listen to the voice of the enemy. So all of this um, intimacy, this relationship, this communication with God, everything else in the Christian life hinges on our relationship with the Lord. Prayer is foundational. And I know I'm speaking to many of you who are already committed to prayer. I've heard your testimonies. You know, it's glorious to know that. But not only for physical healing and health, but also for the boldness of our witness and testimony to those who don't know Jesus. You know, he goes on to say, you know, when we, when we understand that we have this unconditional love, you know, those of us who have been born again, it gives us courage to live no matter what we face. In fact, then he goes on to say, may your kingdom come, right here in the Lord's Prayer, may your kingdom come, your will be done. And you can personalize that, by the way, by saying, may your will be done in me, right. inside of me, in my life. Yeah. It takes a lot of faith to be able to make a statement like that. Because as the Bible said, and Jesus said in uh, the gospel, the rain will fall on the just and the unjust. Bad things do happen to good people. Yeah. That's reality. But for those of us who put our faith in Jesus, we know we can face tomorrow. Like the song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Right. Because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know who holds my future. And as a result of that, life is worth the living because I serve a resurrected Savior. So in other words, you know, it takes away the, the whole issue of worry. Now, don't get me wrong. There are going to be things that happen, happen to me, certainly, and happen to you. That's going to cause to be anxious and worry at the moment. But I think uh, Jesus, in chapter 6, in that same chapter, Later on, when he calls us in verse 25, this is why I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat or drink, about your body, what you're going to wear. Is life not more important than food, the body more important than clothing? For look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather in barns. Your, your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you more worthy than they? Can, you, can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? No. And then he'll go on and say a little bit later, don't worry, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear. For the idolaters equally seek these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. And then he gives this injunction. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things that you're concerned about, money, paying the bills, what you're going to wear, the roof over your head, your children, your health, all these things will be taken care of. You know, uh, one of my favorite verses, and it might be yours too, is Romans 8, 28, yes. where the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, for in all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that's my own paraphrase there, in all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, in all things, God is working for the good, for those who love Amen. him, for those who are called according to purpose. Yes. In other words, this is about the peace of God that transcends all human understanding. Paul would elaborate that uh, on that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, when he would say, don't be anxious. Now, he said, we're going to get anxious, but what he was saying was, don't remain in an anxious state. But in everything, through prayer, let your requests be made known to God. When you do that, the peace of God that transcends all human understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. In other words, none of us here who have been born again and truly put our faith in Jesus, need to remain in a state of worry or anxiousness. Right. Because we trust that this Father that loves us already knows what's coming. Folks, he knows the future. He knows your future, my future. He sees what's coming down the track. Yeah. Anything bad initially that happens to us, hang in there, friend. Right. Hold on to God. Yeah. Because, again, Romans 8, 28, he'll take even those bad things and in his own perfect timing, work them for the good. Amen. For those that love him and those Amen. that are called according to his purpose. Amen. In addition to all that, there was the power of prayer. You know, um, Jesus later on in the Lord's Prayer in verse 13 says, And do not lead us, don't bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, you know as I know, we don't have to look far. 
and, and uh, just read the morning newspaper, or in the case with most folks now, just listen to the news on the internet, social media. We see what's going on in our world. Satan is real, friend. That critter is real. That fallen angel, Lucifer, and those that were taken down and cast out from heaven, those demons with them, they're real. They're out there. Right. Now understand, this is so important for us to understand. They have no power over us. Only what we let them have. Satan, Jesus said, is a liar and the father of lies. There are millions in our own nation, let alone the world, that have been deceived by the enemy in his lies, that have rejected the truth, right. like Paul talked about in Romans chapter 1, and have believed the lie of the enemy and are following him now. It's not flesh and blood. That's our enemy. You know, those folks out there are lost. You know, they need Jesus like we did. And, you know, I'm talking, referring to those in America, uh, maybe half the country or more, that don't know the Savior yet. It's the enemy behind what we can see. Paul talked about that in Ephesians chapter 6, to put on the full armor of God that we can take our stand against Satan. Because uh, that liar in spiritual warfare, even for those of us who walk with God, it's real every day. You know, we're fighting against um, those forces in heavenly realms. Now, we know that one day, Satan, will, his time will come to an end. In fact, the tempter, that father of lies, um, he's out of leash. God's got him out of leash. He can only go so far. And for those of us that walk with the Lord, we have someone greater in us than he that is of the world, right? Amen. Who is that? The Holy Spirit, the living God, greater is he that is in you, than the forces of evil, than Satan himself. And we did, that's why it's so important for us to draw upon his power, that we can face the temptations of our day. Some of you may have lost loved ones right now, you know? You, I can go to any church uh, within our unity movement, the, the different denominations. It's the same all over, whether a church is large with thousands or smaller churches. It's, it's all the same. You know, there are folks that are heartbroken, especially over our younger generation. But you know, there are good things that are happening right now. If you've been paying attention to the news, of course, the major, many of the local channels won't cover it. Uh, some will. But you've heard about the revivals taking place on college campuses. I mean, Florida State, a party school, where thousands gathered in a prayer meeting. Hundreds were saved and baptized. Auburn, Florida State, University of Florida, Baylor University. I mean, all these colleges where revivals breaking out. The younger generation, Generation of Z, those behind the millennials, man, they're coming to Christ right now all over America. There is great things happening. In the midst of all the bad news, there's a whole lot of good news right now. And that is like back in the Jesus movement. How many of you went to the movie and saw the Jesus Revolution? About the Jesus movement uh, in the 1970s? I was saved during that time. 1974 in Key West, Florida. God did a great work at that time among the younger generation. And it's happening again right now. You know, the light shines brighter. The darker it is, the brighter the light. And right now, in the midst of all the darkness in our nation, that younger generation is looking for truth, trying to find out, trying to find answers. And we're seeing revival break out. Thousands of young people coming to Christ being saved. It's so exciting. And a lot, that, a lot of that has to do with prayer. You know, in the Old Testament, the Bible says, um, there in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and of course it was written for Israel, but the same truth applies to us today. If my people call by my name, who's God's children right now today? The church, right? Those of us. If my people call by my name, we're Christians, okay? Christ followers. If they will humble themselves, Seek my face, not my hand. Remember now, a lot of folks like to come to God seeking his hand. What does that mean? That means, Lord, give me, give me, give me. Oh, yeah. Nothing to matter with that, okay? But we need to seek God's face. Hunger for him. If those who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. Yeah. Right now, there are prayer ministries and movements going out like we're doing here in Pensacola, calling on believers of different tribes, Methodists, Baptists, Evangelicals, Pentecostals. We just recently had the whole uh, 
about 10 churches from one denomination, a historical, uh, predominantly African-American denomination called the uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church. I was on a Zoom meeting with 10 pastors. They have all joined this, prayer, this United Prayer Initiative called One Cry Pensacola. And it's so exciting to see in all the variations of the body of Christ, different denominations, different traditions, when you strip away the traditions, the style of worship, and you get down to the person and the heart of the matter, all Christians, truly who have uh, been saved, are the same. They hunger. They seek God. They know, Father, they know their shortcomings. There is a movement now of people realizing that we can be stronger when, and better when we're together and united than we are separated and divided. The world has done everything in the forces of evil to separate the body of Christ over skin color, over denominational theological issues, not essential issues. The gospel is essential. Everything beyond that is tradition, you know, things that we may disagree on, on theology beyond saving theology, which is the essentials of our faith, the gospel. And it's okay to agree and disagree on that. But when it comes to the heart of the matter, if Christians those men and women called by his name, if we humble ourselves, seek God's face, turn away from sin and the tentor, okay? Then God said, I'll hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and heal the land. Amen. Historically in America, before the first and second great awakenings in this nation right here, all of that was preceded not by preaching, not by music, but by people doing exactly what the prophet said in the Old Testament humbling themselves, coming together, praying, seeking God's face, not his hands, crying out to the Lord, and God would rain down his power. And historically, if you're students of history, the first and second great, uh, great awakenings were things that were ignited by people praying. Huge prayer meetings, people coming together. You know, a month ago, or Pastor Wally, when we were downtown, underneath that roof at First Baptist, that historical church, we had representatives of all these 35, some odd 36 churches of different denominations, different skin color, different cultures coming together to pray. It was a beautiful sight. It was a beautiful sight. Right there, setting aside differences and uniting around the gospel, around our love for Jesus. Crying out to the one to bring a revival to the city of Pensacola and a spiritual awakening that will move people's hearts and give us a, a boldness there's an example that I want to close on in the book of Acts. A wonderful story. Right there in the opening chapters of the book of Acts. In fact, right on the heels of Pentecost, in the birth of the church, as the apostles were going into the city streets proclaiming the resurrection. There, um, right there in uh, the book of Acts, Peter and John get arrested, and they were thrown into prison. And of course, uh, they took them out. And uh, the, the authorities, the chief priests, those within the Jewish establishment that had rejected Jesus, felt intimidated by this growing movement. They called it the way before they ever was known, would be known as Christians. They called them the way. This movement called the way. And these people that were preaching Christ, him crucified, they uh, met together to decide what they were going to do with them. They brought them out of prison the next day, threatened them. But Peter and John stood up boldly and told them, you know, judge for yourself what is right under God. For us to believe you, to listen to you, or to listen to our Lord. As for us, we can't help but talking about what we have seen, referring to the resurrection of Jesus. When they left there, listen to this, folks, listen. After that, after they are released, verse 23 of chapter 4, they went to their own people, reported everything that the chief priests and elders had said to them when they heard this. They raised their voices to God and said, Master, you're the one who made heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them. You said through the Holy Spirit by the mouth of our father David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage? And the people plot futile things. For the kings of this earth took a stand, and the rulers assembled together against the Lord, against his Messiah. For in fact, in this city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, assembled together against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, listen to this, folks. Consider their threats and grant your servants that we may speak your message 
with complete boldness while you stretch out your hand with healing signs and wonders to be performed in the name of your holy servant Jesus. Yeah. It gets better. After they prayed this, the place where they were assembled was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the message of God with boldness. Amen. That was some key. They lifted up their voice in unity to the Lord. And according to his will, his revealed will that, that he talked about in Acts chapter 1, when he said, and you shall be my witnesses, Amen. both here in Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost parts of the world. So go, therefore, and preach the gospel. Yeah. You know, after that commission, they went out, and of course now they're facing opposition, like we face in the culture that we're living in right now. A woke culture, okay, yeah. where the gospel, you know, uh, in many cases, you know, is, is uh, finding such opposition and evil. But folks, when they assembled together and prayed, a prayer meeting, not a preaching meeting, a prayer meeting, and they were one in mind and heart, and they prayed according to the will of God. It's hard to believe. The place that they were meeting, like this building right here, not the people, the place was shaken. I imagine like a tremor, like an earthquake. And at that moment, the Spirit of God descended and filled these people with boldness and power yes. to continue to proclaim the good news of the gospel, even in spite of the threat of imprisonment, even their own life. Yes. And the church began to grow rapidly. Amen. We can see it down through church history in 2,000 years of church history. The movement of God has been there in spite of opposition. Even in communist China right now, folks in China, okay? whose establishment and government hate this country. There are 40 million believers in underground churches in China, boldly professing, even at the state, uh, even at the, uh, you know, the threat of their own life, and many of them have died yes. and been martyred for proclaiming the good news. There is power. There's a verse I want to share with you. And I want to encourage you, if you're not currently involved in the prayer ministry, I believe you're one day a month, uh, I know it's on, I think it's on a Monday or Tuesday, <coughs> on a Monday, that you, and you've got a group of folks praying right now from your church, joining us in a prayer for revival in the city of Pensacola and spiritual awakening, that many of the lost of our city will come to know Jesus. How many of you have children, sons, daughters, relatives, close people that are lost and you, you, you have a burden for them? Raise your hand. Sure, many of you do. I think most of us know someone like that. And you've been praying fervently. Don't you give up. That's right. Keep on persisting in prayer. Be persistent. It's not over till it's over, friends. And while we're still alive right here, there is hope. Even our prayers for our children and grandchildren, our prayers cannot love us. They cannot love us. Answers to our prayers can happen after we're in heaven and we're gone. You never get out to trust the Lord. Here's a closing verse, and then I'm going to ask you to do something with me here today. First John, chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Listen to this, and I'll, certainly I'll paraphrase here. For this is the confidence, John said. Now, this is John the Apostle, okay? Not in the Gospel, but in First John, chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Now, this is the confidence that we can have when approaching our Father in heaven. Remember, our Father who loves us. That if we ask anything, listen, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have exactly what we've asked of him. I'm going to say it again. Listen carefully. Go, you can go back and read it. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. I pray this every day in the morning. This is the confidence that we can have in approaching God in prayer. That if we ask anything according to his will, that's important, important now, according to his will, he hears us. Yeah. And if we know he hears us, listen folks, we know we have exactly what we've asked of him. Did you hear that? That we have exactly what we've asked of him. What does that mean? That passage is just, I just read in the book of Acts. They had assembled together to pray what? In accordance with the will of God. They knew it was God's will. For them to do what? Well, to speak the word of God boldly. To be witnesses. They were just facing a threat. Peter and John were tossed in jail and threatened with their very life. Yet what did they do? They came back together 
and united together and lifted up their voices, praying in God's will for the Lord to grant them power and boldness to speak the word of God in their culture in a hotbed of Jerusalem at that time, against all odds, Rome itself. And God came down in power, shook the place, emboldened them to speak the word of God clearly to the lost, to their family. Not to be intimidated, not to be afraid, because the Lord is with us and living inside of our body, friend. He already knows the future. We don't have to worry about what's coming tomorrow. God's going to take care of us, even the ugly, bad things that happen in our life. He'll work it all for the good. Yeah. You know, I, I, the verse that says, those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up as on wings of eagles. You shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Wait upon the Lord, yeah. the scripture says. Trust God's timing. Yeah. It may not all happen. What you're praying for right now may not happen in your time and the way you want it to. The friend you hang in there. Hold on to Jesus. Yeah. He'll work Amen. it all for the good, ultimately, for those who love him. Right. His plans are perfect. Do you believe that? Yes. You can trust him. I want to uh, close out, and Riley had mentioned uh, that, you know, this whole focus in uh, worship today has been on prayer. Yeah. And uh, in just a minute, I want to call you to the altar. Is many that want to come and pray. But there's one thing here on the challenge uh, in this invitation. And that's about forgiveness. If you know the Lord's Prayer, he had it at the very beginning there. <clears throat> Matthew's Gospel. He said, if you don't forgive those that have wounded you of their sins, your Heavenly Father won't forgive you of your sins. Now, it's not talking about salvation, but fellowship. Broken fellowship. But if you forgive those who have wounded you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive your sins. That was written for believers. You, you know, you can be a born-again saved child of God, but be out of fellowship with the Lord. Right. And you can, live a, you can be a Christian and live a miserable life yeah. when you're out of fellowship with God. Your Savior died for you. Whatever's holding you back right now, if it's a bitter spirit, someone's wounded you, and maybe even your own family member, we are commanded to forgive. Once we forgive, that opens up the uh, floodgates again, puts us right back in right fellowship with our Savior, that we can receive everything that the Holy Spirit that, of, of, our, of the living God has for us. Yeah. So we're in this call right now. I'm going to ask you to stand if you would, please. Stand if you would, please. Look right up here, man. Listen very carefully to this invitation, all right? We're talking about prayer. The power of united prayer. Your part, your church's part, of a movement here in Pensacola that's gaining more and more pastors and churches that want to come aboard and take one day a month, enjoy this effort. The goal is to cover every day of the month. That every day, there's at least one, in our case, several churches praying the same prayer in accordance to the will of God. Lord, bring another spiritual awakening to the church in America. Yes. Heavenly Father, move through our lives. Give us holy boldness to proclaim the good news to those who are lost so that they could find Jesus and receive the very thing we've received, forgiveness for our sins, an abundant, rich, and beautiful life that you promise for all of us that will turn to you in simple childlike faith and believe that you can do exactly what you said in your holy writ in the scriptures. So as many of you here today, here's a cell, if you need to come, and get your heart in line with the Lord. Amen. If there's anything or anyone you need to forgive, make that right today before you leave and walk out this door. Yes. For your life depends on it. The people that you love depend on it. Amen. You can't leave the way you came out. That's right. Those of you that want to come to rededicate your life to a ministry of prayer, to join the ministry already existing here at your church, and Amen. join others on that first Monday, of every month, to join that group, to pray, to join your voice with all these other churches of different denominations and cultures that is growing now. We're praying for a great move. That the end of this year will have every day covered. I think we only have like seven more days now on the monthly calendar to fill with churches. And uh, 
And folks, that are, I, I know God's drawing them right now, not only in this city, but there are prayer movements like this going on all over the country. So if you'd like to do that, sometimes when we give a physical gesture accompanied by our commitment, it has a way of sealing the deal in our mind. The physical gesture that I would encourage you to do at this invitation is come. Find a place to kneel here at this altar. If you've given up on believing God for miracles, for those that you love that are lost, rekindle your faith today. Trust Him. Whatever the need might be, to join your prayer movement here at the church, whatever it might be, come and make that commitment here at this altar. God will bless you as you do. That's right. As many that feel free right now, you can step right out of your pews and come right as you are. Just make your way down here. Kneel at the altar as you let God the Lord right now. Amen. And I and those from the prayer team would come, would like to pray with you before we go. And and uh, Patsy is just going to be playing, I surrender all. Would you, every head bowed, every eye closed, would you come? We're going to just spend some time with that. Pastor Ryan's going to close us out in prayer. Would you come? Patsy. to sending Jesus into the world. Amen. Leaving that throne of heaven, taking on human flesh, and bearing our sins on the cross. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for this church that has entered into this partnership, Father, of one cry in Pensacola. And we pray, Father, blessing us as we continue to unite together fervently, daily, seeking your face and for the blessings that uh, father we pray for for not only us not only the church but for the nation in jesus precious name amen amen, amen. 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 Um, if you would please let pastor ron know how much you appreciate him <laughs> are in there. I trust you will read them. How's that? Go in peace. May the peace of God be with you this day. You are dismissed. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Happy Sunday. Uyan na po mga kapatid. Bye. God bless. Ikaw
buong liwanag sa madilim na daan Ikaw ang siyang tanda mo sa aking kinabukasan Ikaw ang bumabay sa aming pag-aaral Kahit hirap sa buhay, ikaw ay nakaalala Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Kahit di ka nakikita, I always know your love for me Handang tumulong sa mga nangangilangan Sa iyong gabay, kami ay may natutunan Napakabuti ng inyong mga puso Sa mga tulong nyo, meron niyong balik sa dulo Laki ng aming pasasalamat Laging dasalang malayo sa kahirapan Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi Magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Sa bawat pag-ising mo pagtulog Sa katauhan namin ikaw ang humubog Mga pangaral at salita mo sa amin ay tumatap Tinurin mo kami sa mundo na isang anak Di mo binabayaan sa oras ng kahirapan Binusubin may kagutuman na nararanasan Ikaw ang tanging ina namin kanuman Diyos na ang bahalang magbalik sa iyong kabaitan Mga pangaral mo ang nagsilbi sa aming aral Nagbigay lapis at papel bumubuhit na parang anghel Nagpatayo ng simbahan Kung saan pwede naming masilungan Maging takuhan Ito yung binabalot ng kadiliman Salita ng Panginoon ko nila nila Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso Sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso Sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa luyo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa luyo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa luyo